pretty quiet, huh? <laughs> hey there, everyone. My name is Monkey Shrapnel from the guys who play games. Back with some, well, back with some more. <coughs> I'm so used to saying that. <coughs> and we are here playing a certain game called Super Mario Brothers 3. Oh, you have to press. This is one of those weird games where you have still have to press select to go up and down. I guess it makes sense. It is the select button. But <clears throat> I digress. Um, so, uh, I haven't actually, I don't think I've ever actually played the, I play, okay. <clears throat> Let's, so I played Super Mario Bros. 3 on Super Mario All-Stars on the Super Nintendo a crap ton. Like, it's probably one of my most played Mario games, to be honest. Other than maybe like Super Mario World, maybe. Uh, but I've never actually played the original Super Mario Bros. 3, but I have seen people play, and I think I actually like this, uh, better than the All-Stars version. I, I played a little bit of this. Like, I went over, I played it at, like, a friend's house sometimes. Um, but I, I think I remember liking this game more than the All-Stars version. Like, the All-Stars version lets you, like, uh, save, but... Like, saving doesn't really matter all that much, because you have the warp whistles, so you can just use those. Uh... Yeah, what was I... I had, like, a whole thing I was going to say. But, um... I'm actually... I, what inspired me to do this, actually, was Cubic Tom's playthrough of the All-Stars version. And after he played through it, I was like, you know what? I feel like playing the original. Uh, I will actually link his playthrough in this uh, description. I mean... To be honest, I don't think I need to link it because, let, let's be real, he has a lot more people watching his videos than Marion, but, um, hey, you know, what's, uh, what's a little self-depreciating humor without pressing the start button? So, let's uh, go. So, right off the bat, we're in World 1, we start off with four lives. I think we have five lives because in this game, zero is a life. Th so, those are extra lives, as it were. We can move around, you can see our HUD down at the bottom. We got the money symbol, we got time, points, lives, what world we're in, and our good old P meter that's in this game only. Doo, 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 doo. So, this game, I don't, I don't know how, like, this could, it definitely doesn't control the same as Super Mario World, but I think I actually like the way this game controls better than Super Mario World. Like, it feels less slippery. Like, you have, like, it's a bit more like a mix between Super Mario World and Super Mario Bros. 1, but. Uh, in a good way, I think. I think it's a good mix. Ah, crap. <laughs> and then I immediately hit by a Goomba, but that's because I'm not used to it yet. I haven't played in a while, so that's totally my fault. We Not going in that pit. Listen, I know s certain people have fallen in that pit before, but it's not me. Alright, I ain't that dummy who's gonna fall into a, a, a pummy. Yeah, that's what happens when you try to rhyme and you don't have anything to rhyme with, it just sounds dumb. Also, I love the, uh, like, what, what is it to talk about? Like, for the big thing, readings and, like, the All-Stars version controls pretty much identical to this version for the most part, but, uh, the big thing is the aesthetics and the way the game looks are completely different. And it's not just like, oh, the All-Stars version is updated and I don't like, uh, how fancy smancy looks. It's more like, there's a lot of little touches that aren't in the All-Stars version. The big thing is, like, for example, look at these things. Like, look how, like, they're bolted on. There's dramatic shadows onto the background. Because, and this is kind of a thing that people didn't actually, a lot of people didn't realize for a long time, is that this game has a an aesthetic of, like, a play. Like, all, everything is supposed to look like just, like, props. Like, things are, like, bolted on the background. Like, if you see question mark blocks, they're the same thing. Oh, wow. What a waste. But like, yeah, like, uh, okay, so. Damn it, you jerk. Get out of here, I'm gonna carry you so you don't do that. So let's get up here, there's a secret up here. Like, uh, like these little star, like the mushroom flower star graphics, they're not in the All-Stars version, it's just a, a cloudy sky. And it's the little things, you know, like the black pipes here like, that are really cool. You can kind of see a glitchy side, but that's because I'm the the screen is wider than it's supposed to be. On the uh, like a normal TV, you wouldn't actually see that. So that's the reason for that. But yeah, like look how like and then like you know exit stage right, like it's all black. That's the, like the curtain. 
and you exit stage right. And it's all black and stuff, and it looks real cool. Uh, but there's actually not too many differences early on. But we'll, we'll see some uh, some very big ones later in the game. Uh, but for now, I guess I'll just play through. We got the athletic music, Goombas that come out of these pipes for some reason. I don't know why, but Goombas really like these pipes. Wee! I didn't even mention the fact that the bonus room in the other level had a three, because it's Super Mario Brothers three. Do 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 do. Like you can see, like all these blue blocks and like the black pipes in the black background. You'll actually see those very late in the game, and that's kind of the big thing I'm talking about. Uh, you can see how everything has eyes. Well, I mean that's kind of a standard mind thing. It's it's hard to describe, but. Uh, I'm gonna get hit by this Goomba like a dummy and get my feather back immediately because I'm a god! Alright. So, I think there is a star in one of these blocks. This one? Oh no. Also, uh, here's a little thing that a lot of people don't know. So, I'm gonna hit this block from the left. Makes. Whenever you. What side the object comes out of is based on where you hit it from. Hit it from the left, it goes out to the right, and vice versa if you hit it from the right, and it goes to the left. Also, I have two mushroom cards. Normally, the easiest one to get is actually the star, because if you want to get a star card, all you need to do is run full speed before it spawns, and you'll always get a star, basically. But I've somehow managed to actually get two mushroom cards. So that's pretty funny. But yeah, like, you can see, like, these heavy backgrounds, and that's because it's supposed to be, like, casting a shadow on, like, the, like, the prop background, as it were. Which is kind of the whole thing. Like, All-Stars has backgrounds, but... It only has backgrounds for objects that are on the objects. So, so like, there'd only be a background for, say, if this block I'm on was in front of this block. Then there'd be a background, like a heavy shadow. And I, and I think it's kind of a shame that they kind of forego it. The cool little, like, play aesthetic in terms of just making it look prettier. I mean, it's not like it's a terrible port. I'm, I'm not going to sit around and bash it all day. Because it, it's not a bad port. Like, it's just, you know... I'm the kind of person that really hates it when remakes take uh, liberties and just like completely change how something looks or feels just because it's like, oh, well, you know, that's how the developers wanted it, you know, right? And I'm just like, well, come on, can't you do the original? Also, speaking of which, I should see if I can get a fly going. Because I- ah, oh, shit! I believe in most of these stages, there is like a one-up mushroom you fly up to the top. But that's kind of hard to get. So instead, I'll just get the mushroom. Damn it! I got the start. If you get three of the same card, you actually get a big one-up bonus. Like mushrooms are two, fire flowers are three, and then the star is five. But if you just get three cards and they don't mix, and they're just mixed and matched, then, you know, it just gives you a normal thing. Oh, so look at this guy. Even though Toad is very much on the right side of the screen, for some reason, if you go walk to the right of him, he does actually turn around to look at you, which is totally unnecessary. Makes you wonder why they didn't just put him on the very right wall and just make it not count. But, hey, they bothered to program that in, so I just wanted to show that. Because that's always fun. And now we got our standard uh, aesthetic, athletic, jumper, lumper stage, where we got to do a whole bunch of jumping. Yeah. Give me that. Yummy. Uh, I think one of these is a one-up block. I forget, but I think this might be a one-up stage, or like a, a coin stage, so... Uh! So I think if you get a certain amount of coins, you actually get a bonus, but that might not be this level, I don't know. They're, they're pretty hard to get usually. You usually need to get to you usually need to get pretty much every coin, which I'm not doing the best job of, as you can plainly see. <laughs> oh God, yeah. On the bright side, this is the first game where if you hold the jump button, you always bounce off enemies, so you don't need to like time your button presses in this game, which is nice. Oh crap, it's that dude. You know, fuck you. Ow. Oh. You know, it's worth it because I'm going to get the uh, star. I didn't get the star. And I feel disappointed. 
Well, you know what? It looks like the timing for the mushroom is just start running about near the uh, the black screen. So I'll try that for next level. Uh, okay. So this is a timing game. I as a kid, I I, I think pretty much everyone as a kid just button mash this because like, oh, it's so fast. How can you do it? But I think there's actually like a clear timing to it. So let's try to get the mushroom, for example. Okay, that's not great. Damn it! So it's like a little bit ahead of the one you get. So let's try getting the mushroom then. See, it worked that time. So I, I kind of get the timing. It's still pretty hard, but it's not impossible. It's definitely worth it to not just button mash through it if you need lives. Uh, it, this isn't the hardest game, so I don't think I'll be needing to worry about lives too much, but you never know. It, it's still an old Nintendo game, and Nintendo games used to be pretty brutal back in the day. Like, the thing with this game, is, if you haven't noticed already, is that this game doesn't have checkpoints. So, the levels are instead pretty short. Like, I think this is like one of the few Mario games that doesn't have checkpoints. Like, Super Mario Bros. 1 has checkpoints. Super Mario Bros. 2, aka Doki Doki Panic, has checkpoints. And this game doesn't, but then, like, Super Mario has checkpoints. Pretty much every Mario game after this has checkpoints, too. And even, like, the 3D Mario games start having checkpoints around Super Mario Galaxy 2. Get wrecked, boom boom, and yeah, that's the easy way to kill boom boom. Like, if you don't know what you're doing, boom boom can be actually pretty difficult, but, like, for some reason, both this game and Super Mario makes the bosses kind of pathetic if you just jump on them really fast. Oh, so as you notice, when we destroy the castle, a way opens up. So, uh, this game doesn't save, but uh, if you get a game over, you don't restart the entire game. You just restart the entire world. And normally that respawns all the stages and stuff, but it doesn't respawn the little locked doors. So, castles are essentially world checkpoints, which is actually pretty cool. And it works pretty well, I think, because like I said... Honestly, like, the stages in this game are not long enough that it really matters. So, like, even if you get, like, a game over mid-world, as long as you've gotten, like, one of the fortresses, uh, it's usually a big deal. Not a big deal. Also, as you can see here, the underground has, like, this little sparkly background, which I think looks really cool. It looks kind of like mineral stuff. And anyways, we got another hidden block here. These blocks are, like, really secret, actually. Like, I actually only know where those first two are. I don't know where the rest are. I have no clue. Anyways, let's get up a fly, because I think this might be the one that has 1-ups. Ah, I was close! There was stuff up there! Dang it! Dang, dude! Alright, whatever. Um... How much did we skip? We just kind of jumped up there. Like, the stages are pretty open early on at some of these... Well, I shouldn't say early on. Some of these stages are pretty open. Like, we're in a completely different spot now. Also, if you slide down here, there's... Oh, that dude just didn't spawn. That was weird. I don't always remember that if you slide down there, that piranha plant just pops up. But maybe that's all-stars only. Who knows? So, theoretically, if I just run at this, I should get a mush... Dang it! You know, I'm not doing the best job, but... Uh, I don't think it matters. I mean, I haven't died really anything. Also, ooh, card. So these, this is like a little thing. I don't know what triggers this. Uh, you'd have to look that up. But basically, it's just a match them. Um, just flip two cards. If they match, you get a bonus based on what they are. So, for example, this obviously gives you a one-up. Uh, mushroom gives you a mushroom in your item box. And here's a little fun fact. Every single layout has this be a mushroom. This is a fire flower and this is a star. So, by default, you always know where at least three of these cards will if they pop up on the other hand i don't know where this one is so i'll just go here dang it that sucks oh well and speaking of which they go into this inventory which is a little thing you get where you can basically use uh i think you have like four like rows of items you can use and basically you can just use them if you like die or something and it's a pretty nice touch actually it, it, it's it's a good way to like super marvel doesn't have anything like that but Obviously, in that game, you can just replay stages. This game doesn't let you replay stages. So that's basically your little gimme. Woo. So, that yeah, that's basically a little gimme. So, like, you get a little freebie, as it were, if you die sometimes. Also, um, in case you didn't know, that was a note block. And while you can indeed... 
Like, you can bounce off enemies just by holding the button, but in the case of Noteblocks, you have to actually time it, which is kind of annoying. Also, uh, like I mentioned before, these, you can see like little bolts in them, so they're like bolted onto the background. Also, these platforms that are floating here are actually hung up by ropes, which is pretty cool touch, actually, I think. Although, it, it's kind of weird because this block is just kind of floating, but I don't know, maybe you can argue that it's just on the background too. And that, that because that item is, that like platform is so big, that it has to be hung up by the ropes. But yeah, and then you have these line platforms, they look pretty cool, I think. Anyways, yeah, I got a mushroom, of course. I have gotten the mushrooms and stars every time. I, I keep getting two mushrooms and a star. Although that time the star was in the middle, so I don't know. Anyways, we got a hammer brother here. So these hammer brothers that move around the map, they move around whenever you, I think, die, beat a level, or just, like, leave. No, you don't, they don't... Well, you'll see later on what I mean. So you can fight this guy, it's just a single hammer brother, and he just dies. And I don't know what dictates what stage you fight them on. I don't think it's per hammer brother. I think it's uh, based on what level tile they're on. So based on where they move around, I think the stage is different, but I could be wrong about that. I would think that's the case though, because I think this game works on like a tile by tile thing. So like each tile has its own stage basically dedicated to it. Anyways, let's uh, pick a box. This contents will help you on your way. And you get a fire flower. I think early on you just get like mushrooms, flowers, and leaves. But later on I think you can get like uh, some special suits which we'll see later on. Also that guy's a dog. Ain't he cute? Oh it's- wait let's try doing a toe pose. Oh it's terrible! The king has been transformed! Please! Find the magic wand so we can change it back! That was a terrible toad voice and it hurts my voice and it hurts your ears. But who cares? Now we're gonna jump on this airship and hey! We're an airship! Right on airship, and it's in the big blue sky. Uh, I think in All Stars, this got changed to like being a like stormy background, and that's one of the few changes I think actually would look better here. I, I think it'd be better if it was a stormy background because it's, but like this still works, I think. Like, like it's kind of cool. Like the background actually scrolls here, although obviously it does that. Ooh, in the new game too. Also. Uh, interesting thing is like all these weird like little background things. I think the the airship levels are pretty well des like designed. Like they look, I mean they don't really look like anything that would exist in the real world, but they still look pretty cool. Also, uh, look at that cannon. Like it's uh, clear instead of making like a uh, colorful, they just make it transparent, which is interesting. Anyways, we got uh, Larry here. Larry. Who is the final Koopaling of Super Mario World is the very first guy you fight here, which is pretty interesting. We and we get the magic wand for killing him. Ain't it fun? Doop. And then we get this sweet song. And we save the king! Oh, thank heavens, I'm back to my old self again. Thank you so much. Here is a letter from the princess. Because that's kind of the thing with this game. It's surprisingly early on that they changed this, but in this game, Princess Peach isn't actually, like, kidnapped. She's just hanging out around, and what you're trying to do is save all the other kingdoms that are hanging around. Greetings. If you see any ghosts, be careful. They will give chase if you turn around. I have enclosed a jewel that helps protect you, Princess Totsuo. Which is a P-Wing, which is basically the cape. Well, like, future games kind of have an item similar to this, where it's basically uh, the leaf, but the P-Meter is always filled, so you can fly and run extremely easily. You can also see a little nice talking graphic there. I'm not sure if the graphic for Toad still talks in All-Stars, but maybe it does. Uh, I think this is one of the last games they call it Toad still in, too. Around the time of... Uh, uh, Super Mario 64 is when they stop calling you that. Anyways, uh, that is enough for this part. Uh, we will continue on with this world, the desert world. This is where the whole stupid stereotype for future games where it's always like grasslands and a desert and then water world and then all that jazz comes from. But this game is the first one to do that in, so obviously it's stupid to get mad at this. Anyways, uh, that's enough of that. I will see you guys later. Uh, Monkey Shop is out. Peace.